reduces your risk of a heart attack. The caramel latte from Cold Stone Creamery, Creamery is an unhealthy coffee drink. Really? Did we already all know this? <laughs> Even though this is the age of information, we somehow, there's constant need to tell us things we already know. We have constant internet access, 24-hour news, cable television, newspapers, radio, and all of this just leads itself to overloads of useless information. And it's all because there's increasing competition to gain market share and to gain audiences. And all, all this does is lead to useless information. So there are three types of useless information that really drives me crazy. And when I hear them, I just have to say, really? <laughs> so I use Yahoo as my internet homepage. And Yahoo likes to have a list of news articles, which gets updated frequently. And one of the things they like to do is they post studies on scientific studies. Every once in a while, these studies are actually meaningful, interesting, and I enjoy reading them. But every once in a while, there's one study that comes across that it just doesn't make any sense. And one of those was, donuts make you fat. <laughs> really? I mean, didn't we already all know this? <laughs> How many millions of dollars did it take to study donuts make you fat? So had I not already known that, I might have eaten donuts for every meal. Breakfast, donuts. Lunch, donuts. Dinner, why not some more donuts? So that, they don't make me fat, so why not? Well, obviously, we already know this. So I don't eat donuts every meal. I don't really eat them that up very often. So instead of spending all this money on useless studies, we should be spending time studying things that actually might solve problems that we're going to have, solve cancer, solve AIDS, solve poverty in the world. So instead of spending this time, do something that's actually meaningful. Another useless information is a series of books and articles called Eat This, Not That. It's along the same lines of healthy information. And the premise of the book and the articles is to give people alternatives of food that they should be eating instead of maybe the unhealthy foods. Because there are a lot of things out there that are deceptively unhealthy and maybe many people don't even know about. So for example, I don't know, maybe you don't eat the salad at McDonald's because it's loaded with sugar. Most people probably don't know that, but they do it because it makes it taste better and they can sell more. So, <coughs> however, even though the article has a good premise, m many of them aren't written for that purpose. Actually, this, earlier this week there was an article, six un most unhealthy coffee drinks. So I thought, okay, well maybe it's going to say Starbucks latte, you know, trade the whole milk for skim milk, something kind of basic, similar to that. No, the actual, the worst coffee drink was the caramel latte from Cold Stone Creamery. Really, a coffee drink from an ice cream shop is unhealthy? I never would have guessed. It's actually not even a coffee drink. It's a coffee-flavored milkshake. So I don't, I don't know how you can even call it coffee. So again, why waste our time telling us things we already know? Let's actually spend the time giving information that could be useful. And I, again, I think this boils down to the age of information where we're constantly needing new things, we've got to update, and because there's maybe not as much information that we already know, they try and tell us things that are obvious. They try and <coughs> trick us into thinking, hey, they don't, they don't know this, let's go ahead and tell them again and make it, make it sound important. But the information that really drives me crazy is useless and misleading statistics. Um, there are a lot of people who try and use statistics to try and encourage you to do something maybe that you not, might not want to want to do on your own. This includes marketers, politicians, even friends and family. For example, my mom always told me, be sure to wear your seatbelt at all times. You're more likely to get in a wreck two miles within your home than you are driving far away. Really? Is that true? Maybe we should move if so Howard. <laughs> Somehow it leads to the impression that driving around your house is more dangerous, when that might not, might not actually be true. Some people like to say that when you're driving around your house, you're you're more you're not paying attention because you're more comfortable with the environment. You know the road, you know what could possibly go on. So when you're not paying attention, you're on a cell phone, talking with friends, listening to the radio, whatever. Well, okay, that ex that could explain it, but. 
does that really answer the true question? And in my opinion, no. I think, I know, I know the reason why you get in wrecks is because that's where you drive the most. If I can draw a diagram real fast. So take this as your house, right in the middle. And then you draw this as a two mile radius. Or you could say the danger zone for some of us. <laughs> so for most of us, you can get everything you need within a two mile radius. If you've got, say, a grocery <coughs> store, restaurants, gas station, uh, some liquor store for some of us. <laughs> and every once in a while, yeah, every, once in a while <laughs> every once in a while, you might have to go outside of this area. Maybe you got to go to work or go to a friend's house or something. Well, even if you're going oil out here, you still need to drive within this area. So just the odds of you getting in the wreck are clearly more likely within this area just because you spend more time there. Not somehow because this is more dangerous or you don't pay attention. It's just it's simple common sense in my opinion. And I don't think that's a statistic that's very meaningful because it, it's kind of obvious. It's, it's misleading. It somehow thinks, oh, well, I don't know, maybe the roads around our streets are dangerous. We need to have politicians fix that for us. Well, no, that's obviously not the case. So really, let's quit wasting our time trying to come up with studies or tell each other useless statistics. Let's just focus on actual meaningful information. And I know if we do this, we can solve a lot of our actual problems.